we're here today under some false pretenses. <laughs> <coughs> Cabell, Fred, you're not here to speak. You're here to listen. We're here to honor you with the DAR Medal of Honor. And this is why. Born April 11, 1923 in Salem, Virginia, Edward Cabell Brand graduated from Andrew Lewis High School, a 1944 <coughs> graduate of the Virginia Military Institute, or VMI. Mr. Brand went on to serve the U.S. Army for four years during World War II as a member of the 70th Infantry Division in the European Theater. He received the Bronze Star for his service and held the rank of captain at the end of his military service. <coughs> Returning to civilian life and his hometown of Salem, Virginia in 1949, Mr. Brand took over his father's small direct selling shoe business, the OrthoVent Shoe Company. He expanded the business, formed the Stuart McGuire Company Incorporated, took it public in 1970 and sold it in 1986 to the Home Shopping Network. A former director of Electrolux Incorporated and the First Bank of Virginia, Mr. Brand serves today as chairman of the Cabell Brand Center for International Poverty and Resource Studies, an environmentally focused organization where he involves himself as an international development consultant. He is the author of, If Not Me, Then Who? How You Can Help with Poverty, Economic Opportunity, Education, Health Care, environment, racial justice, and peace issues in America. Mr. Brandt has devoted a significant part of his life contributing to his community, making a positive impact on thousands of people. He founded Total Action Against Poverty in the Roanoke Valley in 1965, where he served as its chairman and president for 30 years. During that 30-year period, he helped start many innovative programs such as Head Start, the Child Health Investment Project, or CHIP, Virginia Cares, and the Virginia Water Project, focusing programs all focusing on low-income households. John B. Williamson III, Chairman, President, and CEO of RGC Resources in Roanoke, wrote, Cabell accomplished this level of community service not as an elected or appointed government official, but as a volunteer while successfully building a major business that provided local jobs and contributed to community economic vitality. He is living proof that you can be entrepreneurial and highly successful in both commercial and human service endeavors simultaneously. He has developed and maintained a personal balance for building wealth <coughs> and building community that very few can imagine, much less emulate. Among the awards and honors Mr. Brand has received, they include the Lyndon Baines Johnson Humanitarian Award, the Vista <coughs> Award, the Inc. Magazine Entrepreneur of the Year, Humanitarian Award for the NCCJ, and the first Jonathan Daniels Award of VMI. J. H. Binford P. III, General U.S. Army Retired, wrote, Cabell Brand's life exemplifies the concept of the citizen soldier, the foundation upon which his alma mater, the Virginia Military Institute, was built with readiness to serve the nation, and yet prepared for the very duties of civil, of civil life. He served his country during World War II before embarking on a remarkable career in business with simultaneous involvement at home and abroad as regards humanitarian causes. I have known few individuals who have been as successful in industry while giving so selflessly of their time and effort with civic affairs, the underprivileged, the environment, and the general well-being of mankind. And as Mr. Howard Packett, <coughs> past mayor of, Rare, of Salem, added, I can't think of anyone who meets the criteria for the DAR's Medal of Honor more than Cabell, and I hope that you will honor him with that prestigious award. Guess what? We are. <laughs> Good Lord. <Thank> you. <laughs> In recognition of the outstanding service and leadership given by you, to your community, state, and nation, and for your humanitarian efforts, we are proud to present you with our highest award, the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution Medal of Honor. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Frame certificate. You gotta stand up for oh, this. You do. <laughs> <laughs> you 
do. Well, good. And as befits a medal of honor, <laughs> you get to wear a medal today too. <laughs> if I can, oh, should I have this opened here? There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I can't let all my research go to waste. I'm flattered, surprised, and appreciative of this, especially today. I don't know whether you realize it today, but today is, uh, is VE Day in Europe. And uh, I was in Europe at the time. And then uh, a few weeks later, after that, I served with General Patton, and uh, I was his communications officer when he left Heidelberg and came to Bad Nauheim, Germany. And then he asked me to have breakfast with him one day. I was, he wanted some telephones installed, a big deal like that. And so we had a cup of coffee together and chatted, and that's the same day he was in the automobile accident and died two or three days later. I mention that because uh, one of your major projects, I researched a little bit about the DAR, and one of your major projects is you helped uh, fund the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress, which I participated in, Dick Stanfield taped it, and um, and then tomorrow's Mother's Day, and most of you are mothers and a few grandmothers, especially my lovely wife who has, we have 13 grandchildren now. <laughs> Looking at the news last night, it's also the 50th anniversary of birth control pills. <laughs> <laughs> and then I uh, researched a little bit about the DAR when you started in 1890, but with four women, and the men wouldn't take you, but you were incorporated by an act of Congress, which I thought was very, I mean, the Sons of the American Revolution, of which I'm a member, was founded uh, 1876 on the 100th anniversary of uh, George Washington's inauguration. So history is your project, and I remember reading in the Salem Times Register this wonderful project that you all had of taking the bust of Andrew Lewis and putting it in Richmond, and Leanne gave the invocation, and that was a marvelous thing that you did. And also mentioned, uh, uh, read that education is your, one of your primary missions, and that's critical today. And uh, Leanne asked me to talk about volunteerism, and that's a big subject. My book, which she mentioned, is uh, If Not Me, Then Who? And the principle of the book is everybody's got to do something, and. If you don't do it, who's going to do it? So I brought a couple of them with me. If I can't sell them, I can give them to you. You can make a little contribution if you want to to our nonprofit center, which is an education fund. And uh, I talk about in my book six major projects in the world that, um, that I've been involved in. And uh, this leads to uh, all kinds of major issues, but about the DAR and volunteerism as an organization, like many organizations, you can't lobby. But when you volunteer, then you become interested in the project, and that leads to raising money for that project. <coughs> And that means to talking to your legislators sometimes about those projects so you can advocate